Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, and we've got a good one for you today. No, really. Uh, this is Ristwell. He's a World of Tanks veteran, as you can tell, he's driving the Japanese STB-1 Tier 10 medium tank. But he hasn't played the game in a very, very long time, so he is going to be a bit rusty, as will become immediately apparent when you see the trouble that he has getting used to the camera controls. Now for somebody who's fresh back to the game, he was setting himself a bit of a challenge here. He wanted to try to get his first gun mark in his STB-1. Bit of a tall order when you haven't been playing the game in quite some time. Nevertheless, that's the challenge that he set for himself. Now in previous matches in this tank, that first gun mark had proved to be quite elusive. He'd played well and he'd gotten some good results, but none of them had been quite good enough, so... He'd worked out that he was probably going to need 10,000 damage. That sounds like a lot, it's because it is. And Matt has worked helped by his first shot of the game, appearing to go right through the turret of the defender there without actually doing any damage. Although his follow-up shot on the Object 268v4, his third shot again on the Object 268v4 were both good. So off to a good start. That's have a quick chat about the STB-1 while we're waiting for some backup, because right now there's only him and one other tank up here, and that's a lot of enemies on the way. Now, rather than going into laborious detail about the pros and cons of this tank, all you really need to know is that it's basically a leopard, except with turret armour that actually works. Oh, there we go, it's, yeah, getting used to that camera again. The gun has great rate of fire, good penetration, excellent damage per minute, the accuracy is pretty good, although it can let you down at long range. It comes by default with only 8 degrees of gun depression, which isn't good and also isn't bad, but something that I suspect Ristwell is not actually aware of because he hasn't played World of Tanks in quite some time, is that the STB-1 now also comes with hydraulic suspension, which if activated will give you an additional 6 degrees of gun depression. This probably means that Ristwell last played the game prior to the introduction of the Swedish tank destroyers, which was when hydraulic suspension was actually incorporated into the game mechanics, and then spread to other tanks that had this feature, like the STB-1, because I never see him actually using it. Now remember, he reckons he needs about 10,000 damage in order to get that gun mark. And the enemy bat chat is more than happy to accommodate him. <laughs> What is that guy doing? How many times would you like to get hit? Oh, your tracks are a bit far. Oh, hang on a second. Tracks are back up, so what does he do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bat chat. So, yeah, thank you, Mr. Bat chat, for the free damage. He's up to 2,670. It's a good start, but he's going to need to do substantially better than that. Took a hit there from the Lerva. So the fact that tier 8 tanks like the Lerva and that defender down there are present in this battle does mean that it's going to be a lot harder to achieve that magic 10,000 damage figure that Ristwell is desperately chasing after because tier 8 tanks don't have as much health as tier 10 tanks. Although having said that, it's easier to damage tier 8 tanks than it is to usually damage tier 10 tanks. So yeah, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Now, things are not going incredibly well up here. Everyone other than the turtle who's up here with him has either died or run away, and the turtle is acting as if he's entirely sick of living. You'd think at this point that Ristwell, since he is now the last surviving tank, would be thinking of getting the hell out of Dodge. Wow, did he actually damage the turret of a Cranvalu? Are you allowed to do that? That's one player who's going to be raising the customer support ticket to complain. Penetrated in the turret while driving a cran wagon. Inconceivable. Now Ristwell did leave it a little bit late to get out of here. Took a shot there, which immobilised him. Didn't waste any time whatsoever. Burnt the repair kit. The question is, how far is he going to be allowed to retreat? Because they are hot on his heels. Answer, not very far. Yeah, that's more like it. You don't penetrate the turret of a cram bargain twice in one game. Remember, the Swedish Tier 10 Heavy has a three-shot autoloader. But two shots are all he's going to get, because help has arrived in the shape of a friendly cram bargain. Sadly, he is now getting shot in the flank by an AMX AC-48, another Tier 8, this time French tank destroyer. 
He's now basically a one-shot, and with that threat on his flank, he cannot sit there any longer, so he has to go back to where he came. Fortunately, he's got a friendly Kranwagen leading the way. He's managed to knock out another one of the enemy tanks threatening this pass through the ridge up on the northeastern end of the map. Kampfpanzer 52 has just fired, so that gives him an opportunity to scoot forward using the STV-1's great mobility in order to get into the high ground and the cover of the rocks here, and he's going to take his chances with his turret against the Kampfpanzer's turret. Unfortunately, well, one of the features of the Kampfpanzer is that it does have a very strong turret base, but it's not good enough to stand up to assault from the Kranwagen. Unfortunately, while this looks like a good situation, it's about to become a very, very bad one because flush with success. The Kranwagen, who's actually only done about 600 damage so far this game, basically commits suicide by charging right into a Badger and a Progetto 46. Yeah. The Badger is a... It's not something you want to be attacking from the front, let's just put it that way. So, I feel like we've seen this happen before. <laughs> it is once again time to get the hell out of Dodge. He does have the mobility advantage over the Badger, but not necessarily the Progetto 46. And he is a one-shot kill for either of them. And once again, the question is just exactly how far is he going to be able to retreat? Because, oh my god, an Object 268v4. That is not what you want to see when you're on less than 300 health. And you're running from a Tier 10 tank destroyer and a Tier 8 Italian autoloader. And don't forget, the AMX-48 is probably still up there on the ridge as well, but there are only so many things that he can worry about. Oh, and there's... he's still on full health as well. Good job, but you don't want to be sitting there when you're getting shot in the flank. Oh, 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 can't... no, he's used the repair kit. AMX-48 lives to fight another day. 268D4 still in front of him, but not anymore. And just in time too, because there's the Badger. And it looks like the projector has gone the other way. So that's a bit of a relief, except he now has to fight a Badger. And <laughs> he has less than 300 health. Yeah, it's not really good news, is it? <laughs> okay, is he going to wait for the Badger to come around the corner and then immobilise him? But he's trying to keep an eye on what the projector 46 is up to as well. Where is the Badger? Oh, there he is. Here he comes. Close your eyes, grab your ankles, and think of Tokyo. Whoa, he missed! <laughs> but he has a very good reload. You need to get around. Oh, it went into the tracks. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Can you get over the rock? He can. Only just. He's got to stay anywhere other than in front of that guy's gun. Oh, you hear that? Grinding against each other there. They've torn each other's tracks off. That's great news for Ristwell. It's not great news for the Badger. And now on open ground with no rocks to back up against, there is nothing the Badger can do. Literally nothing whatsoever. So, there we go. Nice. Kill number four. Whoa! Back off, back off, back off. That guy was doing 400 potential damage. He's using the 120mm gun. I actually think that the AMX-48 is better off with a 100mm gun. Due to the terrible firing arc, it's got a faster aiming time, it's more accurate, and a faster reload. But this is a tier 10 battle, and the extra penetration on the 120, as well as the extra damage, certainly doesn't hurt. But can we just, by the way, give props, not just to the AMX-48, but also the Lerva, because they're both tier 8s in a tier 10 battle, and they're both still alive and still fighting. All the enemy tier 10s are dead, and they only have one tier 9 left, the UDES-16. shit. Oh, that was a spot of luck. <laughs> Although he's going to need more than a spot of luck to survive this. The fact that he's... Uh, yeah, well, he did at least manage to get some further damage done, but that was fairly inevitable. Now, he just needs to win. And that is by no means guaranteed. The Object 430 is playing it safe and sitting in the cap circle, which is probably the smart thing to do. The Patriot, who did just finish off the AMX-48, and the Object 268v4 are thirsty for more kills, and honestly, they're both on full health. And that is an Object 268v4, so it doesn't have an awful lot to be afraid of. This Lerva, however, is de I mean, <laughs> he's determined to not go down easily. How did the 268 bounce? This. 
Yeah. Good job, Lerva. Never give up. There's always something to fight for. That just leaves the Udis 16. And honestly, if a Udis 16 in this lineup does not want to be caught, 268v4 and Patriot are never going to catch him. So rather than trying to win any harder than they already are, the 268 heads back to back up the object 430 in the cap circle. The Patriot, however, does not. And I'm not sure if that's because he's thirsty for another kill, or he realises somebody needs to... Oh, yes, he's out there, isn't he? <laughs> and he's probably not too keen on exposing the rear of his turret and hull to the UDES-16 and just becoming another statistic. Or it could be that he's realised that somebody needs to block his approach to the cap circle in the event that the UDES tries to reset. Either way, World of Warships players could learn a valuable lesson from these guys. They are entirely happy to just take the win, rather than trying to win any harder than they already were. Either way, Ristwell's Herculean efforts in doing over 11,000 damage in the STB-1 were not sabotaged, just for a change by his team desperately trying to throw the match by winning harder than they needed to. And he got his gun mark into the bargain as well. Congratulations. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.